So we were dealing with the Grand Hotel 89 Epley Street, Bondi Junction, um, and uh, we were about to hear from Ms. Tepsatra. So is she still with us? Yes, I'm here. Ah, oh, thank you. I'm very sorry for what happened, but that's okay. It needs to be par for the course sometimes. Sometimes it goes smoothly, and sometimes not. So smoothly. <laughs> I thought we were doing too well. That's, my fingers <laughs> weren't crossed enough. So you're from um, apartment 103, 33 Bronte Road, Bondi Junction. Yes. And what would you like to say about this application by the Grand Hotel? Yes, so um, thank you so much for the opportunity to address everybody. Um, I only just wanted to say a quick few words, just as I guess a, um, a small representative of um, residents in that surrounding area. We live um, literally across the road from the Grand Hotel and you know, 99% of the time, everything is absolutely fine. But we just wanted to have on the record that we support the recommendation um, already made by council that this application to extend opening hours on a Sunday evening um, will, well, it's been recommended that it's denied. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate the points on why that is a good recommendation. Um, we're very appreciative of small to medium sized businesses, especially pubs and hotels that have struggled during COVID. Um, and we're also in full acceptance that we moved into a, you know, half residential or high residential, half commercial area. So that's not even to the topic here. I think um, it really is just about um, Sunday evenings in a high residential area, granted that it's shared with commercial spaces. Um, it's probably just not the time and place to be extending opening hours from 10 p.m. to midnight. Um, it really does have a noise and um, I guess um, general respite implication and impact on one's enjoyment of a Sunday evening especially we have um, a baby we just had a baby recently and we have found that in the last few months there's been um, just a general rowdiness on a Saturday Sunday as you can imagine um, especially when on a Saturday night it's open till 2 a.m. Um, so I think you know in the whole scheme of its opening hours I just kind of tracked it's about it's open for 102 hours in the entire week and we're talking about an additional two hours that they're requesting which is really two percent of their opening business hours which is not much at all so in terms of financial gains I think they would be minimal anyway for the hotel um, but we have there's people who live immediately above the hotel and then high residential towers in the surrounding vicinity so I just wanted to say for a two percent increase in opening hour time um, to kind of, you know, increase the number of people there um, at such a late night, as well as the enjoyment of that area. It really is, um, it really does impact the people living around um, the Grand Hotel. Well, thank you very much. Are there any questions for Ms. Mr. Sartre? Thank you very much for your attendance. You. So at the conclusion of the public meeting, we will consider this application and notify our decision on the council website. Thank you. We come then to the last matter on the agenda, 145 Hall Street, Bondi Beach. Um, is Mr. Shapiro and Mr. Cosneta present? Afternoon panel. Hello. Um, before you start, um, I want to note that there was a late submission from objectors uh, represented by objector, Mr. Rodney Tobianski, I think it is. Um, in the exercise of my discretion, I think there are sufficient circumstances to receive this late submission, which we have, uh, although I should note that it uh, should be no precedent for uh, such very late submissions, but we will receive it in the exercise of my discretion. Now, um, Mr. Is it Mr. Cosnetta first? Yes, thank you, Chair. And you're the town planner on behalf of the applicant? Yes, thank you. Yes, please go ahead. Afternoon, panel. I'd like to say firstly, thank you to uh, Ben Magistrale for a very thorough and balanced, balanced report which provides a very detailed assessment of the proposal and consideration of all of the public submissions. I understand Robert Tobianski's submission is amongst those. 
Ben was very engaging throughout the assessment process, offering a letter of deferral, seeking clarification and amendments to which we provided a full and compliant response with amended plans and additional documentation. That included council's first comprehensive social impact assessment for a boarding house, which we're confident sets a new standard in assisting councils on the need for boarding houses and puts to bed some of the public misconceptions about these properties. Uh, I do need to acknowledge the significant contribution from Philip Bull of Civic Assessments for his comprehensive research and reporting on that topic. Ben and his management were also very constructive during a formal pre-DA process, which we undertook before embarking on lodging this DA and their advice was taken very seriously and incorporated into the final application. We acknowledge Council's report confirms the suitability of the development for this site and the overwhelming compliance of the project with Council's controls. We accept all conditions of consent. In particular, the creation of three uh, share car spaces for the exclusive use of the tenants is a really good planning outcome that will have a real and practical application for this boarding house. Uh, I raised during the week a typographical error uh, with Ben in condition 17 relating to the number of motorcycle spaces. I understand that has been corrected at the back end of the report in council system and can be corrected in the consent documents. So I won't take you through that. Um, I was here essentially to hear from any objectors that might present. Um, so I might hand over in that case for any questions. Uh, the architect Mark Shapiro is here if there's any questions. I have the robust can address. Thank you, Mr. Cosnetta. Uh, any questions of Mr. Cosnetta from the members of the panel? No questions. One thing um, we wanted to um, mention to you was the um, you said that you accepted the conditions in relation to condition 2A and the, uh, um, the car parking uh, spaces. Um, being provided um, to car share spaces for the exclusive use of uh, the tenants and not for the public. Um, we thought it might be a good idea that it was clear on the face of that condition that this was to be provided for the life of the development. Do you have any problems about that? No problem with that. We. Um expected that to be the case and happy for it to be reinforced in the condition. Okay, okay. Now, any other questions of Mr. Cosnetta? Um, and similarly, um, they, uh, uh, the plan of management should then therefore make reference to the fact that there are four, three or four car share spaces. Um, and so that that would be under the um, surveillance of the manager of the premises, I assume. So he would be the one responsible for, I presume, taking the bookings for the cars and whatnot. That's correct. Um, mm. The boarding house plan and management references one car at the moment, and that will be increased to three. Yep. The booking service will be through that. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure the conditions provide for a community liaison committee. Uh, I just haven't found it. But... Um, would you have, given it's such a large, it's a large boarding house, would you have any objection to a community liaison committee? I can't see that condition, Jim, um, but I know that it exists in other consents. I have no uh, opposition to that condition being imposed. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of Mr. Cosnetta? Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Cosnetta. Does Mr. Shapiro, Mark Shapiro, wish to speak or not? I'd, I'd just like to reiterate uh, Lee's comments in thanking the panel and thanking uh, the council and in particular Ben Magistrali for his comprehensive report and process. And of course, I also support the recommendation uh, for approval and I'm also just here if you have any further questions. Uh, thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Shapiro um, from the um, members of the panel? No questions. Now, I just, just need to confirm, sorry, th there will be an on-site manager. Yes. 
Yes, they will. And, and of the four a car share parking spaces, there's a condition um, that says that one of them goes to the on-site manager and three of them go to the lodges. Right, okay, thank you. That's um, condition number 20, number 15. Yep, and I just need to, just to confirm with the applicant, the breakdown in single as opposed to two-person rooms. And then I believe it's 10, uh, can I just get back to you on that, sorry. Um, yep. It's in, it's in the report. It's just that there's usually, it, it is appropriate to provide yeah. a, a choice within a boarding house. So yeah, there are 13 double rooms and 10 seats. That's, right. that's fine, thank you. Good. Yeah. Plus the manager's room. Yep, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, um, Ms Shapira, Mr Cosnetta. So um, at the conclusion of the public meeting in a few minutes time, we will adjourn and meet to consider this application and notify our decision on the council website as soon as may be possible. And I'm gonna close the public meeting at 12.30 with thanks to all the speakers and to the panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's um, 12.29. Can I suggest we take our lunchtime break now? Um, and would the members of the panel agree to resume at um, 1 p.m.? And we'd have a what, 